Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome to today's video where we're going to be creating this pop-out side panel using HTML, CSS and a tiny bit of JavaScript in order to make everything work. As we can see, I'm able to open and close this side panel right here and you guys can put whatever content you want inside the side panel. All of the source code for this is going to be linked down below if you want to download and follow along. So now let's get into how to actually create a this right here. Going inside the text editor, I've got something like this, an empty index HTML document with a linked up CSS style sheet, which is also going to be empty. So once you guys have something like this, we're going to be good to go. The first step is going to be to include Google material icon library, which is going to give us access to that open or close, you know, button or icon. Okay, so I'll leave a link to these two websites below, but if you go to fonts.google.com forward slash icons, you can do a search for double arrow in the search bar. Also make sure you have the field option selected and as we can see, we have the double arrow right and the double arrow left to choose from. Okay, so these are our two icons which are going to be used. Now, how do we actually make use of them? Well, if you go to this website right here, once again, it's going to be linked down below. You can just simply copy this link tag right here. And once you paste this inside the head of your HTML, you're going to be able to use these icons right here. So going back in the text editor, let's paste that link right up there. And now we are basically good to go. So... Moving on with the actual side panel, we're going to be writing out the HTML first before moving on to the CSS and then finally some JavaScript to tie everything together. Okay, so when it comes to the HTML, we're going to begin by creating a new div with a class of wrapper. Okay, so this div right here is going to be the primary wrapper for all of our main elements. The first one is going to be the main content itself for the left side. The next one is going to be the button to toggle, open or close. And the last one is going to be the actual side panel itself. So we're going to be using CSS Flexbox to achieve that layout. So firstly, let's make a new div inside here with a class of main. And this right here is going to be your main content. So we can just say something like this is the main content, pretty straightforward. The second element inside the wrapper is going to be the button to toggle, open or close. So for this, we can make a new button with a class of side-panel-toggle. Now, you're going to also want to ensure that you have a type of button on this button. This will ensure that you don't accidentally submit forms in the case that this button is inside a form. Okay, so dropping down here, we're now going to be using Google material icons to give us that open or close icon. The thing is, this button is actually going to contain both the icons for open and close. And we're going to be toggling the visibility of those icons depending on the state of the actual side panel. So going back inside the browser and heading to, uh, you know, fonts.google.com uh, back here, as we can see, we've now searched for the double arrow and we have left and right. So to actually use these icons on your web page, go to the side panel right up here and simply copy the span which contains the code for your icon. So I'm going to firstly just choose the left side, copy that, go back in the text editor and just paste that in just like that. Okay. Next up, we can just make this a little bit more slim on the same line and give this a class. We're going to say SP icon and then uh, open. Okay. This right here is our open icon. We can duplicate this line here, make the class close and simply change uh, the icon to be the right side instead. Okay. Now if I save this and go and go in the browser, we can see we have something like this. We have both the uh, icons presented inside the buttons. Like I said, we're going to be toggling these visibility based on the side panel, but we can now move on to the last bit of HTML and that is going to be the actual side panel itself. So we can make a new div with a class of side dash panel and do something like this. We can just say this is the side panel content. Like I said, guys, you can put basically whatever you want inside here and it all should work out. 
Now, if I save this and go back in the browser, we get this right here. So now let's move on to some CSS and make everything tie together and work. So back inside here in the CSS file, we can firstly target the body. So for the body, I'm going to simply set a margin of zero and a font uh, family of sans serif. And then lastly, a line height of 1.5. This right here is purely optional. I just like it make, sorry, I just like to make it look a little bit better. Okay, cool. Now for the important part, we're going to be targeting the class of wrapper. So like I said earlier, this is going to be a display of flex. So let's just say a display of flex right here and also a height of 100 V height to achieve 100% vertical height within the browser's viewport. I can save this and go back in the browser and we have this right here. As we can see, the flex box has allowed us to then have our main content button and side panel all laid out like that. We've also got that full height on the button. We're gonna be fixing that shortly, okay? so. Back inside the text editor, let's now target the class of main. So for the main content, we're going to be setting a flex grow of one. This is going to allow the main content to take up as much space as it wants to. If I save this, go back in the browser, we can see now it's sort of been pushed over a little bit. Okay. Because of that, uh, because of that, you know, flex grow. If I remove the flex grow right up here, we can see it goes back over there. So. It is now trying to expand as much as it can, um, you know, the main content, okay? Cool, back inside here, we can also apply a padding of 20 pixels. Once again, optional, up to you guys. Now, dropping down here, we can now target the side panel toggle. So, of course, targeting that actual toggle button itself, all right? So, firstly, let's set a width of 40px and the same thing for the height, okay? We're going to also want to ensure we have a flex shrink of zero. This will ensure that the content on the left side is not going to affect the width of the toggle button. If I save this and go back in the browser, we get a perfectly square um, button right up there. Okay. Back inside here, we can set a display of grid and a place items of center. This right here is going to give us a vertically and horizontally centered icon back in the browser and we get this right here obviously guys we can't see the effect of that you know centered uh, icon because there are two icons there but later on we're going to see how that works cool back inside here we can also apply a color of white on that toggle and a background of your chosen color i'm going to be using 009578 that is the decode green color and also a border of none followed by a border radius here of five pixels, uh, zero, zero, and then five pixels. So this right here is gonna give us those rounded corners on the edges towards the main content. So back in the browser and we get this right here, okay? Finishing up the button, we're gonna be applying a outline of none and a cursor of pointer. Save this back in the browser and we get this here. Cool. Moving on, we can now just simply copy the class once again and apply a hover pseudo class to that. And we'll just say when the toggle button gets hovered over, we can set the background to be a darker shade of the color we chose previously. So I'll just say here 007960, just like that. Okay, cool. Now, Dropping down here, we can now hide that close icon by default. So we'll just say here, uh, a class of uh, SP icon close, okay? Now, for the close class or for the, for the close icon, we're going to set a display of none with an important flag. The reason for the important flag is because... Um, the Google material icon library is going to set that display property and it's going to basically just deactivate it. Okay. So if I save this and go back in the browser, we have this right here. Okay. So we can see now, of course, the close icon is gone and we have a perfectly centered open icon. Okay, cool. Back inside here now, we can now target the side panel itself and make that look all nice. So for this, we can say a display of none by default, right? I'll just deactivate this right now so we can see we can see what's going on. <laughs> um, but 
back down here, we can set a width of 200 px and a flex shrink of zero. Okay. Some padding of 20 px. Once again, up to you guys, and a color of white and that background color from previously, uh, the decode green color, just like that. And lastly, a box shadow. And we'll just say 0, 0, 10 px RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and then 0 0.35 for a 35% opaque black. I can save this, go back in the browser, and we have this right here. We have nothing. There is no box shadow. Let's go back and figure out why. Um, box shadow RGBA. That's better. Save this back in the browser, and we have this right here. So once again, guys, you can put whatever content you want inside here. You can remove the padding if you don't like it. It's up to you. Okay, cool. Let's just uh, set that display of none to, of course, make it by default not be displayed. And there we have it. So let's make this, uh, this toggle work. All right, so the way it's going to work is we're going to be using essentially a class on the wrapper. And if that class exists, then we're going to apply some different CSS styles to, of course, make that side panel appear. This class is going to be called wrapper dash, or let's just, you know what, let's just say side panel open, just like that, side panel open. And now we can apply different CSS styles if, um, you know, this class is present. So back inside the CSS, uh, the first uh, target for this class is going to be this right here. We'll say side panel open, then target the side panel. So when that class is on for the side panel, we can just say a display of initial. This is going to undo this display of none and go back to the default initial value. I can save this, go back in the browser and we get this right here because of course that class is present. If I remove that class right up here, just press backspace there, press enter and it is now gone. So the JavaScript is going to be toggling this class on or off. All right, cool. Back inside here, we have two more rule sets to go. The second one here is going to be side panel open and we'll target the SP icon open. So for that open icon, we're now going to simply copy the same code from the close and paste it inside here to hide the open icon when, of course, the side panel is open. Okay. Then, of course, Gonna copy this right here and change this to be the close icon right here. For the close icon, let's make this go back to the initial value and make that important also. Save this back in the browser and now we can see when the side panel is open, if I do a refresh here, when the side panel is open, we've got this right here. We have the close icon now visible and of course everything else is displaying perfectly fine. So now let's use some JavaScript to, of course, toggle that class. So back inside here, let's head down to the end of the body and create a new script. So now we can say document.query selector. We're going to be selecting here the side panel toggle button. And we'll just say add event listener. We're going to listen for the click event. And basically, when, uh, when that button gets clicked on, we can now just say document.query selector. We're going to be selecting uh, that wrapper. Okay, so the class of wrapper right here. And we'll say dot class list dot toggle and apply here the class of side dash panel dash open. Just like that. If I save this, go back in the browser, click on the button, it's going to toggle that class right there. And of course, apply our changes and we are almost done. There is one problem with this right here, and that is if your main content gets too big, you're gonna encounter essentially a improper height on this thing. So going back inside here, I'm gonna add some more content. I'll say Lorem Ipsum and just copy this a few more times, go back in the browser and refresh once I've saved it. Let's try again. Okay. Oh, that's, of course, that's the side panel. <laughs> Let's just copy this right here and paste it inside the main content itself. There we go. And try again. So now I can scroll down and we get this empty space here. So in order to fix that, uh, there are a few options. The simplest option is going to be to apply an overflow uh, rule on the main content. So 
back inside here. Let's target the main class and we'll just say overflow Y auto. So now it's gonna display that scroll bar. If there is some overflow back inside here, we can now scroll down and you're gonna get this right here. So that is, that's the easiest option given our solution, All right? So that right there is how to create a pop out side panel using HTML, CSS, and a tiny bit of JavaScript. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you learned something, drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.